Hello, Jem here. And Joel. From the Google for Education team, talking all things G Suite for Education deployment. Now, Jem, I know about you, but I'm a list guy. So today, we're going to talk about the top five best practices when it comes to deploying G Suite for Education. This video may get a little technical, but we've provided plenty of resources along the way. If you haven't yet signed up for G Suite for Education, watch this video here. Let's get to it. As you may know, schools across the globe are deploying G Suite for Education to help students and teachers work better together. G Suite for Education is a set of intelligent apps such as Gmail, Google Docs, Drive, which has unlimited storage, and Google Classroom, all free for schools. We recommend investing time and resources to make sure G Suite for Education is set up correctly. Which brings me to tip number one. You want to automate user creation and provisioning. Syncing users from a source of truth, such as Active Directory or student information systems, can save IT teams a ton of time. Now, if Active Directory is a source of truth for your schools, Google Cloud Directory Sync is for you. It's a one-way push from AD that populates users, groups, and shared contacts. And there's even a password syncing tool called G Suite Password Sync, which will sync passwords from your Active Directory all to Google. Other schools may want to use student information systems to sync their users, and this is great. There are a variety of other tools on the market. EduLive. Yep. I'm Unified. OK. Salamander. All right. OK, Joel. Clever. We get it. Little sis. <laughs> There's a lot. On to tip number two. Tip number two, create an organizational unit structure, or OU for short. OUs enable admins to do two really important things. First, apply settings to groups of users or Chromebook devices. Second, delegate administration. We'll cover that a little bit later. Let's grab the board, and I'll take you through the best practices of setting up an OU structure. This is the best practice for a single school. You'll see here at the top, you have the domain. This is called the root OU. Underneath that, we've created a Chromebooks OU, a staff OU, and a students OU. You'll also note underneath the students OU, we have nested other OUs. That's year four, year five, and year six. Now this can be the graduating year or the actual year. You'll also see we created a test OU and a suspended OU. This is for Chromebooks or possibly users who have been suspended. Now let's take a look for multiple schools. This is the same OU structure you'll see here with an OU for the domain at the root. And then we've actually created separate ones for primary schools and for secondary schools. But underneath that, that's where we list the actual schools, like the previous version. And you'll see here, we still have the Chromebook, the staff, and the students OU, and the same for the secondary schools, Chrome, staff, and students. We've also created a presentation which outlines all these options. Great drawing skills, Joel. <laughs> you ready for tip number three? Be strategic. Turn services on or off for your users. With the sound OU structure, it's easy to enable or disable services for students or for teachers. Let's give you an example. So head into the admin console at admin.google.com and then go to the apps option. Here you'll see core services and additional services. Let's say you want to turn on Gmail for teachers, but turn it off for students. Just click on the core services, then click on Gmail, and here you can disable it for students. In addition, I also recommend turning a service like Google Voice off for all users. I recommend working with school management to decide whether to turn other additional services on or off for certain teachers or students. Great! Tip number four. Set default retention policies in Google Vault. Google Vault is a powerful e-discovery and archiving solution. Just with one minute, you can set a default retention policy, which will archive all email and Hangouts chat if you wanted to. This is really great in case there's bullying that happens at the school or something along those lines. Here's how you do it. In a new tab, head over to ediscovery.google.com, click on retention, and then create default retention rule. Here you'll have the chance to determine how long you want to archive email and chats. Some organizations choose 18 months, some choose seven years, some indefinitely. It's up to you and your compliance obligations. Save the changes and you're set. Retention's set up. 
Well, Joel, we made it to tip number five. This has to do with teamwork. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Set up customized admin roles. Super admins have the keys to the castle, so to speak, and are super powerful. But they don't want to do everything right, so what you can do is create delegated administration roles. For example, a head teacher maybe wants to look at classroom usage. They can do that right in the admin console. Or you can enable support staff to reset passwords. We'll even have a pre-built role just for that. In the admin console, search admin roles. There we go. Now we're going to add a user to the help desk role, which allows that user to reset passwords. Click assign admin, enter the person's name, and you're done. That person now has access to function that you set up. You can even create custom administration roles beyond the pre-built roles. Many schools will create a role for managing Chromebook settings, for example. Okay guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching these top deployment tips and make sure to watch the other G Suite for Education and Chromebook deployment videos. See you later. Bye guys.